Intelligence analysis always follows a dual track of analyzing what you can see and what you can't. The massive coverage on the recent Snowden revelations has basically all been theater, as most had already been revealed and was known about by every intel agency on the planet. Two old platitudes come to mind, crying crocodile tears and Shakespeare's methinks she doth protest too much. When you cut through all the smoke and mirrors, the essence is very simple. Snowden, like Assange, despite the huge amount of classified material with all the embarrassing things that involved so many countries, neither of them seem to know anything about the massive Israeli espionage that is carried out all over the world. For example, the field reports from Afghanistan and Iraq involved Israelis being picked up as contractors doing very nasty things and, yes, doing them even to American troops. None of that stuff made its way into the leaker's shocking release pile. We have people who wrote some of these reports and they were major headlines. My verdict? No leaker who had access to the mother load of dirty intel laundry on numerous selected countries and who never releases any on Israel is for real. They are an operator. Why? Because busting open the Israeli espionage cover-up is the story of a lifetime. On one side, you have a loyal faction of modern intel professionals trying to monitor and block Israeli penetrations. And then there is the rogue bunch, assisting the bad guys for all the rewards offered, not so much by the Israelis themselves, but their substantial political helpers. The battle has been going on for a long time, and there is a huge amount of material available, even in the declassified files. If you want to find out more, all you have to do is scratch the dirt. It is the espionage scandal of our time, and these phony leakers have contributed nothing. Veterans today burned Assange in the fall of 2011, with Ziggy Brzezinski helping through his big PBS interview where he spilled the beans about the Assange information being released, having been seeded. He gave our initial claims a lot more exposure. So that really leaves only one plausible explanation for missing the Israeli espionage angle. Remember, it would be impossible for a really connected leaker not to know about it. And if Assange and Snowden were really these altruistic goody-goodies who cry about the public's right to know how they are being abused by the government spying on them, then why would they give the Zionists a free pass for doing it to all of us? Press TV readers would know why, because these guys are an Israeli string. This is simply Intel 101. When everybody is getting embarrassed by leaks except for that one special group, there is no suspect number two. The Europeans are crying wolf as part of the charade. Also, they all have been doing similar communications intercepts spying on their own people, and more than a few of them in conjunction with the US under sharing arrangements. The beginning of this came from the alleged 911 hijackers. They had spent time in various European states and moved around different legal jurisdictions as the most normal tactic of that era for avoiding close monitoring by counterintelligence services. Communications intel people did not want to get caught being responsible for missing another major attack, so it was open city on collecting everything they could by whatever means available. The NSA name for it was total awareness. This sometimes would include having other jurisdictions do things that were illegal for you to do in your own country. For example, years ago, Canada intercept sites could collect material on Americans and we on them, and both could testify that they were not collecting communications domestically and be telling the truth technically, but they were never asked about whether there was a sharing arrangement with anyone. This is part of the theater of congressional hearings, what does not get asked. The Israelis have a huge appetite for intercept information, 
and they used their Jewish lobby political muscle to get their contractors inside many of their friendly country counterintelligence operations, especially communications. In the US, Michael Chertoff literally hardwired them with full promotion and protection from Bush and Cheney. Remember this is the crowd along with Rudy Giuliani who are going to make Bernie Kirik Homeland Security Director after being a high school dropout in detective third class. He was nothing more than a sock puppet for his handlers who would have been running the show. What kind of leaders would use a tragedy like 911 to put a totally incompetent person in charge of the biggest conglomeration of intel and law enforcement in history? Many were suspicious that they wanted to make sure that 911 would never be unraveled as to who was really behind it here in the US. Bernie would have been perfect for that. He's been out of jail a month now. So what we have going on is a cruel betrayal, not only here in America, but in many countries. The war on terror has been used by elites as an excuse to get a very nice grip control over their populations, profiling them on a scale formerly only dreamed about. Why would this be necessary? The only real answer is a looming fear of public finding out what their governments had literally done to them, the extent of the corruption and how thoroughly they have been pillaged. People learning that their countries had been stolen, that would make them dangerous. They would all turn against those responsible the only defense for the elites then will be to quickly round up all those of a certain profile, those who had the leadership skills, the knowledge and the network strength to fight back. The data mining ability available to governments now is absolutely incredible. They can find out just about anything from anybody, but not on the Israelis, of course. Think about it. With these new tools, we should have been able to decimate Israeli's espionage networks here. Political, military, financial, media, academia, and the think tanks. How many Israeli intel networks have the Western countries broken up since 911? The answer is zero. The Zionists have compromised these Western nations in a variety of ways with the primary tool being political espionage, as that is the pathway you use to get your people deeply embedded in all the important spots. They spent 10, 20 years, even longer, grooming their people to have them ready when the time is right to slip them into sensitive positions. Even our Justice Department has been compromised as loyal people have gone everywhere to initiate prosecutions only to be told that it was just impossible for protected entities. Assange and now Snowden are just sideshows, burning up the public attention time clock that could have been much better spent going after the really dangerous threats. You cannot involve the Israelis in anything and have any security. The two are mutually exclusive. The professional intel people all know this, but get overruled by the civilian leadership where that fixes in. To call these countries democracies is an embarrassment to the word. These are conquered countries where people sold the story about the tooth fairy and who are now struggling to outgrow their childish beliefs as their make-believe world comes down around their ears. All of these countries, their elite classes, deem their own people to be their number one threat. And the Israeli lobby operators are stuck to the elites like glue, promising to protect them when the dark time comes. That they will be okay if they are with the right group. Dear people, we are not on their right group list. We are on the expendable potential threat one. Even war on terror veterans found themselves on it, yet many are still refusing to let go of their teddy bears and face up to what has to be done. You can shoot me as the bad news messenger if you want, but that won't save you. Saving ourselves is going to require some very clear thinking 
determination and building street armies like the Egyptians just did. When we can put 50 million people onto the streets and bring the military over with us, it will be a new Independence Day. And the first order of business would be to clean up 911 and not let those responsible walk among us. <laughs>